Hey guys, welcome back. It's Biggs. Now you guys remember all the talk I did. All big was all big talk about doing a Congo tank. Well, it's happening. It's happening good. It's gonna happen right this time. We're gonna quarantine. We're gonna do everything we needed to do before. But before the fish get here, we got a few things to get taken care of. Well, here's the Ultra Deluxe Super Well Aquascape Tank. I don't know if I'm going to win any awards with it. Ah, just kidding. This is basically I've hauled most of the product out of this tank to be able to set up the other tank. And we're going to show you guys in a minute. But what I really wanted to show you guys is that in that when we lost everything, we didn't lose absolutely everything. But one thing that's really cool is I still have a pair of these Nanochromus. Uh, I believe they're... To Gweasley, I believe. I know I'm absolutely butchering that name, but I do have a pair of them that survived. And I probably have, I don't know, about 10 or so of uh, these uh, African kerosens. And I do know, Oliver did mention that I do have two distinct species. He's not certain which one was the second one, but you can see the one there, that beautiful male there. It's kind of in the center of the screen there. And then there's that one that's kind of off to the side of him. That is an entirely different species. So what we're going to do now is I'm going, to go, I'm going to go over and show you what I did with the Congo tank because this tank here, I want to get the bulk of the fish out of this tank and get this set up to be the quarantine tank for the new arrivals. That way they're not going into the main system. So here's kind of the first look of the Congo tank. This canister filter, this won't be on the tank, but this is basically the fully established biological canister, canister filter that was running on the piranha tank behind me. It'll eventually be used over in that corner to run the 120 planted tank. But the problem I was faced with yesterday in doing this is I was not happy in the way of the way the woods and different things were placing out in the tank. I was not liking the way it looked. The new background, I granted the water's still a little bit cloudy because I was just setting up, but this one here is only about eight inches from the front glass, and this completely encompasses around the bulkhead filling, or, or the fitting for all the, everything for the overflow box, which runs the water all the way to the wet-dry filter. Same as on the other side of the aquarium, I built this kind of like a cave-like area, and then it came right out. And you can see that's only about the width of my hand to get back to that first boulder there. And that's all part incorporated, and it comes out in many different areas throughout the environment. So it made it very, very challenging to accommodate putting in uh, a lot of the different wood products. I spent a lot of time on this yesterday, and then I spent even more time on it today, and I finally came up with a way that I looked. It was mainly this piece was the one that was causing me the most challenges, because it was actually oriented in an entirely different way. Uh, in the other aquariums and stuff and sometimes you just have to take a step back and play around with it and find something that works Now I did definitely want to incorporate predominantly all the uh, all the African plants So I had a lot of the different Anubia species So we've got a big clump of Anubius Nana here and you know, it's about 24 inches long It's just been growing for years and then I have several clumps of Anubius Congoensis or no, I'm sorry. This is Coffifolia so there's several little clumps there, there's a big clump there, and then I have two clumps here that are glued on as well. And then I believe the other ones are Anubius barteri. And then I actually put in the different Bulbitis ferns. That one there is all tied on with a fishing line directly to the to the, one of those pieces of Shearer stone. And then I have that groove that run down to the back wall that separated the right and left sides of the background, that is in that fissure is where I put another large stream of uh, the bulbitis, so it failed basically anchored directly to the wall. And then I could have had to finish it off with my uh, three little bulbs of uh, Crinum calamistratum, which is absolutely one of my favorite aquarium plants, and it gives it a totally different vertical texture in, uh, uh, within the aquarium. So overall, I'm pretty, pretty pleased. Now the only thing that's left to decide on this one, and this one I'm really, really on the fence. So I'm going to be asking you guys to give me your thoughts. Now originally, when I built the Amazon Aquarium, I always had the intentions of doing that style of type of lights. You guys see the nice... I changed, uh, probably from the video, I've changed the, the, the piece of wood that was originally there. It was a lot thinner and I just didn't really like the look. And this one here, I like it that it really butts up real tight, nice against the wall there. I think that gives it a nice little feature there. Maybe once the ceiling's done, it'll make it even look even better. And it's just suspended by a couple of nice jute hooks. 
So overall, I really like the effect. I absolutely love the effect within the aquarium. Now, if you remember in the video when I talked about these lights, I actually originally had three on the tank. I found them to be way too bright for the tank. I'd say that, uh, you know, you never saw the fish. Well, you don't see the fish right now because I'm in the room right now playing around and uh, moving stuff around and everything. And you can tell that the tank has not been cleaned for uh, uh, probably about a couple of days or a week. I haven't done the water change on it. That's coming up shortly. But the one thing that I'm on the fence on is this is the type of lighting I was originally intending on putting on the African tank, on the Congo tank behind me. But the problem I'm concerned with is the amount of algae growth that I get from these bulbs. Now, I get this kind of a blanket algae, and I really, really don't like it. I see all the reflections in the, in the screen here. But I really, really don't like this kind of a slime algae that grows on literally everything. It comes off real easy when I do a water change. I literally just pass my water change, uh, my siphon right over top of it, and it sucks it all off, and it's maintained it fairly well. Now, granted, in this aquarium, because the piranhas are in this tank and they're fed pretty much a diet of all meaty foods, be it krill or bloodworms or market shrimp, there, there might be a lot of more organics in this aquarium and that might very well contribute to the explosive algae growth that we get on that wood and maybe then we won't have it in the other aquarium. But the other aquarium, I do not want to have this blanket algae to coat all the Anubias. So I really like that look of the Anubis, and you'll see that the bulk of the plants, now granted all the plants that I have in here, maybe with the exception of the Calamistratum, but the Bobitis, all the Anubia species, these are all generally low light plants. So they're gonna be able to tolerate fairly low light using, you know, and currently I'm just using, it's an LED fixture, I believe it's a fluval fixture, and it's working fine right now. But I, in this system, I could easily move over almost any one of the existing lights that I have and put them within here. However, I can go and build those lights and suspend those lights in this exact spot if we want. Uh, I, you, you see that I moved the fish side. I moved it from the other side there because I didn't like it behind all that stuff. And I really don't, not really sure where else I would put it. I really want it to be a focus in the fish room because it's such an incredible light. You guys have seen in the past how, you know, how much I love these type of things within the fish room. But the really cool thing is that you can change every color you want. It's got a little remote. You can do anything you want with it. I just think it's really, really cool. It was made by a very, very dear friend. Uh, and uh, to me, it's a cherished thing that I always want to have as a part of the fish room. So I really don't want to conceal it. But the other real factor that I do not want, the other idea that I'm considering, is that because this tank is decidedly lower than the other one, the other one, I can walk up to it and I can just see inside of it. But I built, you know, built it this way that you know, the bulk of this stuff is concealed. So you know, for, for, for your perspective of what you're going to see, you're going to enjoy you know, that without seeing all the garbage. When it came to this one here, because it's so decidedly lower, I'm considering building a canopy for this one that'll sit on top and cover all the way up to here. I'll build it on a similar type material so it's nice and clean, it blends in well with the room. And then I'll have to, then I'll rely on having to put an LED strip in there unless I go and suspend those lights and then drill holes in there. So I'm not really, really sold. I think this will give me more flexibility using LED light strips and different types of bulbs will give me more flexibility in regards to growing plants in this aquarium versus in the Amazon aquarium where I had no intentions of growing any other plants. So I'm on the fence a little bit there. For now, we're gonna start with this, but I do have the fixtures available to go ahead and do that if we choose. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Dripping the fish, so there you get to see all the fish there. That's the one, the bigger one there is the one male buffalo head that I showed you. And those nanochromes are kind of obvious from above. There's the male right there facing this way because you can see the eye shape is a little bit different. Maybe you can't, maybe you can, but I can tell them from above which ones are which. So, really excited to get these guys into the tank. The one thing that we do have to do here is because some of those kerosens are a little bit small and my overflow here is basically egg crating, I'm going to have to go and get some of this smaller mesh and just put it on the outside to prevent my kerosene from going into my filter. Other than that, I'm pretty excited. So I always drip my fish, not only for just temperature and stuff, but all the entire water chemistry. Now I went and tested both of the tanks 
And if we look at the tanks, you can see that the colors are almost identical. The pH, which is that one in the middle, is just slightly different. The top one being this tank. Uh, that is the addition because the, that whole background is still made out of concrete, as well as zero stone also uh, imparts a bit of hardness to the water, so it might affect the pH chemistry of the water a little bit. But they've been dripping for almost an hour now. Came from an inch of water all the way up to three quarters of a pail. The temperature in this tank and the 75 were the same temperature. So honestly, with the, the chemistry this close, I probably could have transferred them over directly. But I always like to be safe. You guys know what happened last time, so I'm going to play it safe. Well, to say that I'm pleased would be an understatement. Seeing the, some of those colors on the kerosens, and we're talking, these animals have literally been out of the bucket for seconds and they're already totally at home in this new environment. There's that beautiful pair of nanochromas. There's the Steatocranus buffalo head that just swam by. I'm very, very excited to see this tank finally coming together. So if you guys are liking this, let me know in the comments. If you're liking the type of stuff that we're still putting out, maybe consider becoming a member of the channel. And as early as I mentioned earlier, guys, let me know your thoughts in regards to the lighting. I think as a black water tank, especially because I've got the plants in here, using the LED strip lights, even though it's a little bit more stark and harsh type of lighting, at least it's a little bit more even and balanced instead of creating those individual rooms like uh, the LED spotlights do. But let me know your thoughts. I've created every room, every fish tank, every vivarium, every terrarium in this room with the, with the plans that they all can change periodically as they mature. But I am absolutely ecstatic to see this Congo tank finally set up, and I am even more excited to know that the new fish are going to be on their way soon. So with that, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.